Paul, um, thanks for coming. This is this is fantastic. Uh, we, we really needed to make this happen tonight. We've got a good chance for some exposure here beyond Caroline, and uh, really appreciate everybody coming. So it's it's been a long week. Um, it's been a long summer. Uh, you know, this week we started with the the Monday event. Um, the summer, it's tough. It's tough to carry on the fight for zoning when farmers are farming and you know our business is, is cranking and people have summer things to do with family and friends uh, but you know we kind of stepped away a little bit but we're back and this shows it tonight and Monday shows it and we had maybe 130 people there Monday we're gonna have that posted online if anybody needs to see it um, but it's been a great week we had a beautiful speech by mr. Nolan Gray he's out here somewhere on Monday make sure you take a look at that if you missed it uh, and in addition, we've got a um, Christian here from Reason Magazine who's been interviewing folks all week to help us, you know, to help the, the fight against zoning get some exposure. And also uh, Tim and Calvin doing some documentary filmmaking. This is all good stuff for us. It's making people see what's going on. Think, you know, on a level that we haven't been able to achieve before. And you guys coming here tonight helps a ton with that. So thank you for helping. Thanks for the guys that are here this week for shining a light on our little battle and the negative effects of zoning. Um, we tried very hard to get the town board and the zoning commission to come to Nolan's uh, speaking event and or to meet with him in person. And, and some of them did. Uh, some did come. We had Catherine and Cal, uh, Bruce, Jean, Bill Padulka, and Ernie Bales, I think, all made appearances either at the meeting or in person, uh, but not everybody. And Notably missing, as, as you, I'm sure, already know, uh, were Kate McKenzie, uh, Tim Murray, and Mark Whitmer, the three people that we needed to hear us the most. Uh, they ignored us this week. Uh, they're not in here tonight. They should be. You know, we had big plans for tonight. And who can remember the last time we even canceled a meeting if somebody was out of town? It doesn't happen. They did it because they're afraid of you and hearing what you have to say. Um, I'll tell you, you know, the plans for tonight, we were going to submit this. This, this is that giant petition that you all have helped carry and put your signatures on uh, for the last many months. This was going to be handed to the town board tonight. Instead, we're adding a few signatures. Yeah, thank you. We're adding a few signatures and we're still going to get it to them. And we're asking, you know, in New York State, you are not allowed to vote on whether you want zoning or not. It's You're not allowed to have a referendum. That petition says that this town wants a vote. And we're asking that the town board wait until after next November to cast their votes on, on zoning. That way, that way, they the candidates that are up for election next year, which turns out is Tim, Mark, and Kate McKenzie, the three that won't listen, that's who's up for re-election next year. They're going to have to run, or or somebody's going to have to run on a zoning or no zoning platform, and we get the, and we get to vote if we can get it to push back to them. Will they will they wait to vote? I don't know. Time will tell. But there's a 1,200 signatures on that. Somebody help me. 1,100 on that. 1,160 signatures on this thing. By far the biggest petition that this town has ever seen. Uh, the petition for the Dollar General to stop that and start the business moratorium started with something maybe in the 800 range, but really only had 400 and some legitimate signatures of people who live here. So, uh, and, and Tim Murray was adamant at how great of a petition that was. Ours is nearly three times the size. They need to listen to that, right? Um, so somebody's going to have to run, you know, for their re-election on whether they want or don't want zoning. We've all heard many different arguments against zoning articulated by all of you at the meetings um you know it, it discriminates it yeah thanks keep beeping but uh, it discriminates you know it's um it, it removes your ability to choose what to do on your own land but we haven't heard good arguments for zoning so if somebody wants to get reelected, they're going to have to come up with something good and they haven't done so so far so that's coming um we're going to get that turned in. We'll keep all you folks posted on that. So after the meeting on Monday, we did get some feedback a little bit from some folks in the town board that weren't happy with a few of the things that, that Nolan had to say because some of those things in his speech uh, were maybe things that were in the original 
document, the, the zoning draft, but had been removed and aren't going to be in the yet to be released final draft. Well, we can't look at the yet to be released final draft, so you got to take your shot with what you've got, right? So we've got folks that are upset about some of the things he said, but I'll tell you this. It's a simple fact that those things were in there. And that means that those people's minds had had that mm-hmm. they had that in their minds to put those things in there and restrict us in those ways. Whether they're there or not, they were there and it's in people's minds, right? So as we move forward, if they if they put together a, a whittled down version of zoning and people decide that, hey, this is okay or that's okay, and they take this stuff out to pacify us, it is not it does not mean that those things that we didn't want are gone. When the zoning gets put in place, stuff will come back. It will grow. No one told us on Monday that New York City's zoning plan started with 12 pages. It's up to tens of thousands now. It's bigger than you can print. So zoning zoning laws aren't going to get smaller when they get in place. We don't want to negotiate. We don't want it. We don't need it here. Uh, so that's that's a simple fact of that. We want to choose what's best for us on the property that we pay taxes on. Plain and simple. That's it. Um, at any rate, uh, we, say, we say often that zoning will create a homogenized, one-size-fits-all, you, you know, and take away Caroline's uniqueness. You know, we've got awesome things here in Caroline, but those came and, you know, farms come and go businesses come and go, but we are who we are because of how we've evolved over the years. We also say that uh, zoning will, will hurt the little guy the most, you know, and, and the folks that are for responsible zoning say that's not the case. You know, we're going to put forth responsible zoning. What is that? What is responsible zoning? They haven't told us that. You know, the, the fact is that as soon as you put zoning in place, you lose your right to choose what to do on your land. It's gone. Secondly, zoning costs money. You need somebody to enforce it. You have special permits that you have to go after. You know, taxes go up because there's bigger lot sizes and less of them, supply and demand. You know, every time you add cost, if, if we're forcing a business to come in here and put special plants by their sign or move their parking lot here or there, or anything, anything that adds a dollar will squeeze out the guy that really didn't know if he had enough money to do it in the first place. And then you add $10 or $100, or you ask him to put solar panels or geothermal, which could be great things, but if you force somebody to do that, it adds cost. And who does it hurt? It hurts the guy that did not have enough money to fight this. It, it doesn't hurt a corporation that could come in here with lawyers and spend time doing, uh, you know, all these different engineering things to get their approvals through the zoning commission. It, it hurts the little guy who just wanted to try something. So tell me how that doesn't discriminate. If you don't have a zone, if you have a zoning plan that adds one dollar to anything, you're going to discriminate. At any rate, the town board didn't want to hear us tonight. We can all see it's dark in there, right? This is the first time they've canceled, and that we know of. Um, but we didn't go away. We're all here tonight. And when we stand together like this, they can't ignore us. They can't. And they must listen to what we say. Um, so tonight, before you leave, make sure that you sign both petitions. One is the original one that says that uh, we want them to wait until ne- after next October. And then there's the new one that we kicked off and really haven't done anything what yet with yet. That one actually says we don't want zoning. The first petition did not say that, so we're going to have to make sure you sign. Let's make sure they hear us. But most of all, keep fighting. You know, keep coming to these critical meetings when we need to get, um, when we need to be heard. You know, keep writing those letters, making your signs, doing whatever you can do, do it. And, And then next October, cast your vote and end any chance of discriminatory zoning coming to Caroline. Our neighbors up the lake did exactly that last night. They ran two candidates on a no zoning platform, including the supervisor. Guess which two candidates won last night? Hector ended their chances. Yeah. 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 That's what we need to look forward to next October, but you have to keep fighting. In closing, I'll leave you with this exact quote from Mark Whitmer. 
quote, yes, zoning has a historically bad track record, end quote. Thank you, Mark, for that. Um, so remember, <laughs> town of Caroline, established 1811, no zoning needed. Thanks a ton. When you turn that petition in, don't you want a full house of the town meeting? We do. Don't you yes. Want to say yes. Fill it full we we do. Yeah, we do. We'll, we'll make announcements. You will know. Yep. Good. I think you all need to be there. So, so folks, uh, we're going to let Nolan just say a couple of words, maybe one or two others, short and brief. Um, but again, I thank you for coming. How's everybody doing? Good. Come on, let's let's break the noise ordinance out of here. How's everybody doing? Um, when I started working on a book on zoning uh, about three years ago, I didn't think it would win me a vacation to Caroline in November, but uh, life works in funny ways, huh? No, it's, in all seriousness, it's been a real pleasure to be here over the last, uh, I guess, three days now. We've been crisscrossing uh, Caroline, all the little hamlets, talking to folks all over. Thank you. Uh, uh, and it's just been, it's been incredible. I mean, when, when we drive around this place with Calvin and Tim and we're talking to folks, we see a community that, that people have loved uh, for generations, for decades, folks who had maybe just moved here a couple years ago, folks who have been here since, uh, what, 1811? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty wild. Uh, but we also saw folks who had plans for the future. You know, I think something that's so beautiful about this community and why it's so rich and such an interesting place and a place that so many of you seem to love so dearly is uh, it's a place where people have plans for their own lives. They have plans for their own future. Almost everybody we talked to had a plan. They wanted to, they wanted to build a home. Maybe they wanted to build a, uh, an accessory unit. Maybe they wanted to start a small business on their property. Uh, maybe they knew, you know, farming is constantly in a state of flux, and they knew that they maybe wanted to try new things and, and continue to be stewards of their land uh, in ways that can't be anticipated by a zoning code. Um, I think that spirit, as I've said, is, is what makes Caroline so rich and so interesting and so such a place that so many of you have fallen in love with. I think, you know, we all know by now that, of course, zoning uh, in many ways puts a, uh, communities in a straitjacket. In all, many cases, of course, it doesn't start that way, but the code gets stricter. Uh, the wrong folks get on these boards and they make it very hard to build. Um, but. You know, if we need to keep the, if we want to keep Caroline, I think the way it is, and, and, and the community that you all built, I, I completely understand why folks are out here. Even if the town board meeting was canceled, I, I got to be honest. It's another thing I didn't, I didn't expect town board meetings were going to be canceled when I would come to a meeting uh, or come to a, a town. But um, thanks all, to all you all for coming out here. Um, I'll I'll leave you with this. I, I think, you know. This stuff can get really contentious. It can get really heated. I, I perfectly understand why folks are getting flustered about, you know, rules that could significantly change what they can and can't do with their property, what kind of housing they can build, uh, what kind of business they can start. But I think I think we win fights like this by staying positive, by making the positive case for, you know, folks are doing this because they love this community, uh, not because they're afraid of something or because they're hateful toward uh, some uh, individual or some group, but because they love the community and they want to protect it. And uh, talk to your community members, talk to your neighbors, uh, stay active. Uh, I think, you know, there's an incredible energy here. I'll tell you, we drove around. Uh, it was actually kind of hard to drive across the city because about every 200 feet, I would say, pull over, I want to take a picture of this no zoning sign. Because uh, <laughs> there are just so many of them. That there's all kinds of creativity there. Uh, stay positive, keep pushing. You know, you all are part of a broader national discussion that's happening right now about zoning. Cities uh, and states all across the country, across a range of political parties and political ideologies are reevaluating zoning. And as I said earlier, the best way to, uh, zoning is like a, a cigarette habit. The best way to stop is to not start. Um, <laughs> don't go down this road that so many communities have gone down where they've ended up in places where the communities are unaffordable, where young families can't afford to remain in the community. They can't afford to buy a home and start a family or retirees can't afford to downsize in their community. Um, so many communities have gone down this path where uh, their community just essentially frays up because of all of these rules. Stay positive. Keep talking about how much you love Caroline and how uh, avoiding zoning will help to keep it this great community uh, and keep fighting. Uh, I think, you know, I think there's a strong case to be made that there's not a clear consensus here, that this decision should not be made before it's had the opportunity to be an election issue in 2023. Um, if you can get to that point, though, keep fighting the good fight. Stay positive. Talk to your neighbors. 
keep talking about how much you love Caroline. Thanks again for the hospitality over the last few days. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Nolan. Uh, anybody else? Pete, Bruno, Pete? I'll be quick. Um, I had to try out this brand new lectern here. I think it's really neat. Um, I want to give you an idea of the schedule as I see it starting to shape up over the next few months. As you know, the fourth iteration of the moratorium that we are in the midst of right now expires April 30th. And the town board is frightened to death that trailer loads of D9s will come in on May 1st if they don't have zoning in place. So toward that end, the Zoning Commission has been meeting every single Tuesday through the month of October. And they say that they have got it wrapped up now, everything that's going to be in their draft, their recommendation. And they are planning on holding information sessions on that at the end of November. Uh, they haven't decided yet whether it's going to be one hybrid session, one um, <clears throat> one in person and one zoom or just how they're going to do it but it looks like that's going to be the tail end of november right after thanksgiving and they're planning on the mandatory public hearing this is the public hearing for the zoning commission which is under new york state law they have to hold they're thinking of doing that um, in, in the middle of december they are thinking of submitting their final report to the town board in the middle of january once that report is submitted, the Zoning Commission ceases to exist, again by New York State law. Then the town board has it on their hands to deliberate, do whatever they see fit. My guess is the town board will see fit to love it just like it is and get it through as fast as possible. Uh, they have to do a little bit of footwork with the county and with the SECA review. And they also have to hold a public hearing. The town board has to hold a public hearing, which will probably be held, I'm going to guess, late February, early March. So all of that points to a vote on zoning, either at the March or the April business meeting, which is maybe five months we have. As John said, it is so important. We've got to keep showing up to these town board meetings, you know. They thought they could wear us down. Well, okay, okay, so we stopped to take a breath late summer, but we got our breath. Now look at us out here tonight, guys. We got to start coming to these town board meetings, and even if we don't all get up and speak at this lovely lectern, there are plenty of people who do like to speak. Some some folks like me, they know what I'm going to say. They don't give a shit. But um, <laughs> we got to show up. We got to we got to fill these pews. We got to be there. We got to look them in the eye. They won't look us in the eye, but we got to try to look them in the eye. And if they pass it, they pass it. And we, at least we can say we've done everything we can to try to prevent it. And laws can be repealed by a newly enacted, by a newly um, impaneled legislature, and we'll try to do that in 2023. But better yet, if we can just hold off and keep them from passing this. Thank you all very much for coming out. Thank, Thank you, John. You. Awesome, Pete. Thank you. That's, uh, that's key information. Everybody always asks about the timing, and they never really told us much. But now that they're close enough, we can start to see the picture shaping up. So uh, one last, Bruno. I'm inspired by everybody here. This is incredible. And, John, you referred to Hector last night had an election. And the supervisor candidate uh, was running on a no zoning platform. He won by 52 votes, which was 2%. The town board candidate won by 8%, it was 204 votes. And Hector, there was no protest like this. There was no pushback the way you folks have been doing. This is really inspirational. And you got to keep the pressure on and you can succeed uh, because you know the, you're on you're basically you have a very strong case persuasive argument to make and the the bottom line is Hector is a not Hector Caroline is a beautiful beautiful town because of its rural free spirit and the people that are in it and that make it, they're the ones who make this beautiful town. You are. And the town board 
with zoning would basically simply sanitize it. They want to preserve the rural character, but they really would end up destroying it with zoning. So I, I just want to keep and assure everybody you're on the right track. Keep pushing and keep pushing to Election Day next year. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Anybody else? All right. I forgot to touch on it the other night. Here we go. I find it ironic that they keep saying, well, we can't make a law so you can vote on it, because I used to think we'd probably be outvoted. But it's, oh, I don't need a microphone. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So they tell us they can't make a law so that we can vote on it. And I used to think we would lose because there's so many people that aren't here that may favor it. But it's interesting because when they talk about zoning, they say, well, we are going to make laws that aren't covered under state, federal, local, and county. So it seems like they're pretty choosy. And then the other night, thanks to all the people who helped get my ass out the door, but I forgot to say that there was a comment made that has never been apologized for. We didn't start it. We've been called low class for, for it. But my that person's point was that generational residents' opinions are have equal weight with people that have moved here. Well, then why aren't there more of us on any of the boards, subboards, or appointed positions? If it does have equal weight, it should have equal representation. And there is a pair of reading glasses over there on the bench. That's it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you guys, awesome evening. Really appreciate it. Um, have a great night and we'll Give you a shout next time we need all those bodies here. Thank you. Yeah, if we don't have your contact information, especially so that we can communicate during the next election cycle, and for these zoning things, make sure you give us your email. Uh, make sure you sign the petitions.